Tux here. Today, we're doing a review on the Fnatic Streak Mechanical 65% keyboard. This is a 65% keyboard, so it means that it has arrows in the bottom right and more function keys. And you can probably tell that it is also made by Fnatic due to the branding on the top and the name. So yeah, let's get straight into the review. Hope you enjoy the video, guys. Leave a like if you like it and hit the dislike if you dislike. If you love the video, hit the sub. Let's get into it. So what you're seeing now on screen is the unboxing experience. It's just me just unboxing the Fnatic Streak 65. It comes with a USB Type-C cable in the box. It's decently well packaged. Nothing that stands out to me, but nothing bad. And when you open the package, it's like this. You've got the Streak 65 Quick Guide, blah, 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 blah. The actual keyboard itself. And then you get a USB Type-C cable in there. And that is it for the box. And I just wanted to quickly show you this, but it's just a cool unboxing experience when this pops up as your first thing. As you can see, it just lit up in Fnatic, in orange. So, talking about the switches of the keyboard, which are probably the most important part of any keyboard, is it's going to decide the feeling of the keyboard, partially the sound, and it's also going to decide how it feels in-game. Um, so, this keyboard uses the Fnatic speed switches. Now, you can tell they're Fnatic speed switches because they are orange, if you didn't know. And they are made, actually made by Kali. So... Kali speed switches used to be full size like uh, mechanical switches, but these are low profile ones. And what that means is that the actual total travel distance of the switch is only 3.2 millimeters, which is great for in-game purposes, which I will go into more detail soon. And it also, the switch actuates at one millimeter, which is the same as a Razer Tournament Edition. They're not optical switches, but I don't feel any difference between optical and mechanical switches. And I do feel like these are even faster purely because of that travel distance being lower. So I just want to do a small comparison to the Apex Pro and to Tournament Edition in terms of the actual switches. So I'm going to put this all up on screen because it is going to be a little bit difficult to follow because there's a lot of numbers I'm going to throw your way. But the SteelSeries Apex Pro has a 4mm total travel distance and a 0.4mm actuation. The Razer Huntsman has a 3.6mm total travel distance and a 1mm actuation. And the Streak 65 has a 3.2mm travel distance and a 1mm actuation. So what that means for you as a player is this keyboard is going to feel very fast and responsive. Compared to like your Apex Pro, the Apex Pro is still very fast and responsive. But because of the high actuation, even if you lean on a keycap, it's going to press the key. Which you don't want in, especially in a competitive game, you don't want to make miss inputs because that could mean your life or death. Um, also, the keyboard felt quite floaty because even though it had that very fast high actuation, the travel distance was extremely high. It's, it's basically like a normal typing keyboard travel distance, but with the speed of a gaming keyboard, which is quite weird to me. Um, it's definitely good for, let's say you want to press one key, it's going to initially activate very quickly. But if you want to keep spamming the key, same key over and over again, like if you're editing in Fortnite building, if you're peaking an angle in Valorant or CSGO, this keyboard is going to do a better job at that. Whereas with the Razer Huntsman, the Razer Huntsman achieved a very fast feeling by having that one millimeter actuation, um, but combining it with a slightly lower total travel distance at 3.6, but also giving you a very light key press. Now, what the light key press does is it allows you to press a key very fast um, in consecutive uh, orders, um, but that also means that it's very easy still to make miss inputs, um, which I believe this keyboard's found a good medium between those two boards because it has that lower initial actuation. It has a lower travel distance to increase the speed, but the weight is very slightly heavier than a Razer Huntsman. Now, it's probably closer to an Apex Pro in terms of the actual weight of the keycap for when you press it down. It's not too heavy by any means. It's definitely fast enough for gaming. Um, but because of the combination of the lower actuation distance and the total travel distance, it's just a better keyboard all around for gaming. I think it's a. I think this switch is probably the best gaming switch made so far because it combines comfort, speed, but also reliability all into one package. So just quickly going into the RGB of the keyboard, um, because I know a lot of people do care about that. So I'm just going to go over it quickly, but you can press FN and M and that will put you in the RGB mode. Then you can go to your, your different settings that you want to, or your different color settings, and different variations of RGB in the keyboard. Um, you can keep going right or left on the arrow keys until you see a red arrow. And that means that you're at the end of the cycle. And then you go back through the settings until you hit red again. And then you know that that's all the settings that you have available to you. Now, as at the moment, the RGB on the arrow keys on the top and bottom are both turned off. When you go to one that you can change the colors of like this, they go green and you can start to change them through. So it's very simple, very easy to use. 
honestly is a great looking keyboard the only issue with the rgb that i found is it has two lights literally laser beaming you as you watch youtube as you're sat back in your chair you know if you have it flat on your desk and you're playing no issue at all if you go and lean back a little bit and uh in your chair then yeah you yeah you, you you do have two bare leds literally just staring at you in the face and it does get quite annoying but um you can put like maybe some tape or dark tape over that and it will fix the issue i just didn't want to do it for the reasons of the review just wanted to give an honest review of the keyboard in its bare form so let's jump straight into the form of the keyboard as i've already said it's a 65 percent keyboard so you're getting that compact form factor which actually was fanatic's idea they wanted this to be a keyboard that you could bring to lands because it is quite light but it does still feel quite premium despite having an all plastic build the edges are quite rounded which is you know some people prefer it some people don't if you like a more retro style keyboard you might like something that's a bit more boxy looking but i do quite like this clean design and it doesn't take up a lot of room on the desk if you flip it over it has feet on the back side which only go up to one level um unfortunately but on a low profile design you actually don't need the keyboard to go as high because it hits more it sits more flat to the desk which means that your wrist uh, if I show it this way, it doesn't have to bend as much to go over the keyboard and hit the keys. You can have your wrist a bit flatter and that is just good for ergonomics and also a bit comfier. So I've given this keyboard a lot of praise, but there is one big downside to the keyboard or not big, but there is one downside to the keyboard and that's the keycap set. So the keycap set they use is actually quite good in terms of the form because they need it to be uh, thin and they need the keycaps to also fit this certain layout because the shift on this keyboard is actually smaller than other ones and other keycaps are actually different for example you have this extra key here i've actually i don't know why they have this on here but as you can see on my razor huntsman it goes z straight to shift whereas there's another one and the shift is quite small on this keyboard which i've never had a problem with but they've had to use special keycaps for it now what that means is that it's going to be harder to change the keycaps on this set so if you use a normal keyboard with normal keycaps then you won't be able to swap those keycaps over to this one um, that's because obviously the keycaps are different but also they need them to be quite thin because if you press down the key you don't want the keycap hitting the bottom of the keyboard because it will give quite a weird feedback to the key um, it's just the design of low profile keyboards um, which is kind of an advantage because they're more ergonomic and they do actually actuate faster because of that low travel distance but it means that they have to use special switches for it so you won't be able to change these out unless Fnatic do one specifically for this keyboard or a third marty retailer a uh, third market retailer starts selling switches for this keyboard so going through my time with the keyboard um which i've gone through a little bit in the video but i just wanted to wrap it up here to make it a little bit more understandable make it a little bit more easy to digest so i've had this keyboard for about two months now i would say that the keyboard is definitely my favorite gaming keyboard at the moment the switches are insanely good the keycaps don't bother me at all and the build quality has been perfect i've never had any issues and i would also like to say that i did actually have to get a second version of this keyboard now i think it was just a quality control issue because the space bar was actually a little bit rattly on my first one i would say now it's on par maybe slightly better than a razor huntsman but maybe a little bit behind the apex pro because the apex pro is really good stabilizers but it is almost twice as expensive as this keyboard um but my space bar still has a slight bit of rattle um and i'm not sure if you can pick it up on on here but to the left side there's a slight bit more rattle than to the right side now it's not because i've used the left side more this came out of the box like this but my previous one had a very rattly right side whereas the left side was absolutely solid so i think it's something to do with the design of the switch uh, of the keycap sorry because they have to specially design these keycaps for this keyboard i think there's a little bit of quality control issues going on with how uh how uh, well tolerance the keycap is i think maybe when they you know make the keycap when it cools down it might bend slightly to one side meaning that one side's a bit higher than the other or something like that but overall it hasn't affected my experience too negatively i mean it's just a very small uh bump in the road compared uh, for a great keyboard like this to be honest with you um, and compared to my other keyboards i'm much preferring this one for gaming and it is definitely the best keyboard i've had overall you know for typing comfort and gaming in an all-in-one package in this form factor it's just it's near perfect it's a great keyboard from Fnatic, and you know i would have never considered a Fnatic product before this but now that i've had this keyboard and i've seen you know how good this keyboard is um yeah it's definitely a company i'm going to be looking out for in terms of gaming products in the future
So I hope you enjoy my review of the Fnatic Streak 65. Like I said at the start of the video, I wanted to make it as short and sweet as possible to make it easy and digestible so you guys can make a good informed decision of which keyboard you're going to like. I think keyboards are a little bit more simple to pick than a uh, mice, than a mouse, sorry, um, which is more like, you know, a kid in a toy shop. It's very hard to make your decision and you just want to try them all. Whereas a keyboard, once you know what you like, you can go out and get it and then you're going to be happy with it. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the review. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Again, hit the like button or the dislike, whichever one you think suits the video and uh, hit a hit the subscribe button if you want to see more from me, more content, more reviews, that sort of thing. Um, I'm going to be trying to get up my 360 hertz review next. And then after that will be the Zero uh, mouse pad and the Hayate Otsu mouse pad. So yeah, leave a like if you want to see those reviews and let me know how I'm doing in the comments down below. Anyway, enjoy the rest of your day, guys. Appreciate you guys watching. Much love.